Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, March 18th, 2011. Before I get started today, I just want to thank another YouTuber for sending me these things here from Independence, Missouri. This is a Chicago Electric Chainsaw Chain Sharpener. It's not a commercial grade unit, but it's good at home anyways. So I'll have to set it up and try it out one day. And he also sent an extra grinding disc for it. Now he also sent me some synthetic grease and this grease here it says that it's good from minus 40 Fahrenheit to 400 Fahrenheit. Now when I'm talking about low temp grease this is good for that. It's a grease that will not get hard when it's cold out. And it's a nice soft grease as well. He also sent me a small grease gun like that which is handy in tight spots. A little screw starter. You stick this on your screw when you're putting in points or something so the screw doesn't fall out. It's even got a magnetic tip here. I'll make a video one day showing you guys exactly how to use this if you don't know how. And he also even sent a present for my wife. It's a little solar garden light set. As you can see there. So thanks again. Much appreciated. And I also want to thank all the other YouTubers who've sent gifts in the last week as well. Now a lot of YouTubers are asking me what are the most popular carburetor kits for the Tecumseh engines. Well here's some of the most popular kits that I use often. To start with this is the kit for the carburetor like this with the adjusting screw at the bottom. The number for this kit is 632347 but you may want to make double sure that this is the right kit for your carburetor. So it'll come with the adjusting screw, the bowl nut and everything like that, all the small o-rings that go by the screws so it's pretty well a complete rebuild kit. The second kit I use most often is 631021B and that comes with the gasket needle, the clip for the needle as well which is down here, the gasket and the seat there and this kit I would use mostly in the carburetors without the adjusting screw at the bottom. Another kit I use often is from the 3.5 to 7 horsepower Tecumseh engine it's kit number 31840. Now if you don't need the screw and the needles and all that in your carburetor, you can always get by with kit number 631021B because it's just a partial kit of these two kits here. It's a much cheaper kit, sometimes that's all you need to replace. Now I do sell them to people if they're in a jam, I can ship them to the States or Canada for $7 including shipping. If you can find it cheaper somewhere else then that's good too or at your local small engine shop probably would be a bit cheaper because you wouldn't be paying for shipping. I usually don't sell the parts as a business but if someone's in a jam I can throw it in an envelope and mail it to you pretty cheap. Now the ball for these carburetors is number 631867 and like I've mentioned in a lot of videos if you see a bit of corrosion here where it contacts the carburetor you should replace it because you can get a carb leak. These bowls are pretty cheap and you might as well replace them for what they cost. I think you can buy them under $5. And if you're doing a complete carb rebuild you may as well replace the float because sometimes it can take on gas and it's not going to work properly. The number for that is 632019A. Now sometimes you're going to get the float that's made of plastic which is the same float. It's going to work in there. So they may have superseded this number to a plastic float so don't worry about it if it's not made of brass. If you repair small engines you may want to keep at least one of these kits in your stock. Now my next question the YouTuber has a small Tecumseh motor like on this snow blower. It's a 5 horsepower and he says it bogs down in the snow and it doesn't have much compression here when he pulls it over. Now this little blower here has the same symptoms. It bogs down in a little bit of snow. It's not too bad but I can tell it's got a problem with the compression as well and usually what the problem is on these small 5 horsepower to come same motors is that the exhaust valve needs to be taken off, grounded down a bit and then reinstalled. It's probably losing air from the exhaust valve and once you do this procedure it's going to have a bit more compression and therefore you're going to have a bit more power. So here's a 10 horsepower Tecumseh motor. It's different but it's the same principle and that it has the same valves here. They're just going to be a bit smaller on the 5 horsepower motor. 
Now while you're at it, you may as well remove both valves. And once you remove the head on the motor, you shouldn't be able to turn the valve sideways like that in its groove. It should be nice and tight like this. If you can turn it like this very easily, it means it's losing air. Now what you would do is remove this cover, check the gap there, and go from there. I'm going to try to make a video soon on how to do that on the 5 horsepower Tecumseh motor. And usually I don't have to replace the rings. Just by grinding down the valves and lapping them, it cures the problem. Now my last question today, YouTuber asked me, why do I use oil from my oiler can on the drive axles of snowblowers instead of lithium grease? Well, the reason for that is because the lithium grease is very expensive. Sometimes with the oil, what I find is that it spreads out really good and when I insert the wheel, it doesn't push the grease in toward the snowblower. Now this is what I'm talking about, the drive axle that the wheel goes on to the blower. Now, sometimes I use oil, put the wheel on and spin it so the oil gets everywhere. You can also use wheel bearing grease here. You can use lithium grease if you want, but the reason why I don't use the expensive grease is because the wheel is stationary on the shaft. Basically, I just put grease or oil on the shaft to prevent rust and to prevent the wheel from seizing on the shaft. Once you put your grease or your oil, just spin it so it saturates all the parts. Now if it were parts that were rubbing against each other and turning all the time, then I probably would put a low temp grease or lithium grease. Lithium grease works good in the winter time as well. So as you can see, it becomes part of the shaft. And what happens is if you don't grease it properly or oil it, sometimes your wheel will be fused to the shaft when you go to remove it. So I don't use lithium grease because it's expensive, but I do use wheel bearing grease in there. Doesn't matter if it's low temp or not. And I do use oil from my oiler can. It's much cheaper that way. So that'll be it for this week. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday. Take care now.